Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another recommendation video and I hadn't realized until someone was recently asking for one of these that I haven't made one of these in a long time even though I pretty much read these books whenever they come across me. I haven't made it its own separate video in quite a while. And as you can tell, that is Age Gap. This is actually the fourth Age Gap recommendation that I have made. I have done taboo ones before. I have done a student teacher one before. Um, I have done older woman, younger man before, and then just a straight up regular Age Gap. But I realized I haven't made one in quite a while. And recently I've read some pretty good ones. And so I wanted to give those to you today. Um, they're going to be across like all genres and topics. So I'll kind of tell you as we come across. Some are taboo, some are not. Um, some are older women, younger men, some are not. So we're going to dive into those. So the first one, I better scooch over so I got room because also I'm too lazy to go get some of these off my shelf. Some of them I don't own, but usually it's like when I own it, I try to show it and... I feel like when I'm holding it up, I end up flailing all over the place. So sometimes it's just easier to show it. But anyway, this is a book that I have shown in quite a few places recently because it's just so good. And I'm so thankful to my friend Avery from Avery Loves Books for pointing this book out to me multiple times. I've heard her mention it, but it finally like snapped through my head because I have been reading other books by this author recently. And that is The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. This is actually novella length and it is a older woman, younger man. It is a pining virgin hero. Um, they're actually both virgins because she's been locked in a convent for the last 16 years. So the setup of this book, I've said it so many times at this point, but just in case you came across this video searching good old YouTube for some age gap recommendations, I will tell you. So this is about, she was a princess at the time and her father had kidnapped the son of a barbarian clan, okay? And he was only eight years old. And she knows that they're going to try to hurt him if something goes wrong. So she's been keeping this young boy with her and protecting him. And her maids and people are kind of like, why are you doing this? And she's like, he's a child. He doesn't have anything to do with this. So she's been protecting him. When her father loses, her father's men come to try to hurt him. And she was like... It may be my only act as queen, but I will protect him. And this little boy, this young boy tells her, I'm never going to forget that you did this. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, now she's been in a convent for the last 16 years. She was probably 16 or 17 when this happened. So now she's in her mid to late 30s, actually. And she's been living in this convent. And the king, who was our, you know, our young prince's dad he has died so now this man is being made king and he shows up at the convent and she expects that he's here to kill her because she's really the only um she's really the only like threat to his rule even though she's been locked in this convent all this time but no he's not here to kill her he actually has never stopped thinking about her or forgot what she's done. He's kept himself pure for her and he's here to offer his heart to her and ask her to be his queen. And she's just like, but I'm old and I'm your enemy. And he's like, I've never forgotten what you did. I've dreamed of you like all through the years. And he's like, I want you to be my bride. And so because he is a barbarian king, there are some very interesting rituals that they have to go through before they can be man and wife, and it's delicious. I say this every time. I wish this book was 400 pages long because I just wanted to spend time with them, but it also conveys everything it needs to convey. It is this wonderful relationship blossoming, and it's beautiful. It's, it's perfect. And then there is Forbidden Daddy by Kelly Meyer. So yes, this one has some daddy kink in it. This is about a girl in college. So I think she's like 21. Uh, I think she's old enough to drink. So I think she's 21, 22. And her landlord, who he, he like owns, it's like a duplex kind of situation. And he has kind of had his eye on her for a while, but he doesn't want to be like a creepy neighbor. And then one day, there's something wrong with, um, I don't remember if it's like her pipes or her, you know, like I literally don't remember what it was. But he's over there 
And literally we get to see both of their POVs and we know that like she's wanting to make a move on him. He's hoping she's going to make a move on him because he doesn't want to be the one to do it. But the thing is, is she's pretty shy. And so he kind of makes a move and then like waits to see what she does. And then it goes from there and something um, happens between them. And uh, I just really, I just really enjoyed it <laughs> um, because there's just a little bit of daddy kink in this one. So if that's not something that you are a huge fan of, I think this could still be fun because it's a pretty quick story. Um, and yeah, it was just really sweet. I liked it. Then there is Thief of Shadows by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is an older woman romance as well. Um, this is a widow um, and a virgin hero who runs a home for unwanted children in London. This is a historical romance in case you can't tell. And there is this um, board of women who support this, this school, this home. And they feel like he's not doing a good enough job being the leader anymore. And so they ask one of their ladies, who that's Isabel, if she will kind of advise him and help make him more presentable to society so that they can raise more money for the home and that um, things can go well. <laughs> However, Winter Make These has some secrets and... He maybe is not the completely buttoned up, well-behaved schoolmaster that we might think. And that's all I really want to say about this. I also want to tempt you into reading the whole Maiden Lane series, which happens to be behind me right here because I just did a um, live show about Maiden Lane talking about all my favorite things. I do kind of suggest you start at the beginning of the series, but I am selfish enough to want you to read Thief of Shadows that I will plug it and say, read this book. <laughs> um, it, this has scenes of teach me how to please you. This has scenes of you are the only woman I've ever felt these feelings for. Um, and there is trigger warnings for infertility and um, remembering multiple miscarriages. We don't have to see them on page, but we have to remember them with our heroine. Um, so I just want to say that, but the way our hero responds to that knowledge and the way that he just takes got such good care of our heroine, calls her on her crap, <laughs> um, removes the obstacles between the two of them, and just loves her with an open heart like it is winter make peace is very close to being on the book husband list now those of you who are new to this channel you don't know but currently i only have one man on my book husband list fictional man and there's one man who's very very close to him and winter make peace is very very close to them in my heart so take that for what you will then there is Incentive by Pam Godwin. So this one is pretty interesting. Um, if you've been around a while, you know that I am trying to read all of Pam Godwin's books. I want to do one of my videos about um, a deep dive about her, and I actually only have one book left. This is one I read recently. It's one of her standalones, and I would say that it is one of the least dark of her book. There still are a couple like dark elements, but it doesn't really have the like non-consensual stuff or the dubious consent that some of her other books have in certain scenes. And it has a pretty unique situation. So we have this Hollywood star who's in her, I believe she's in her 40s. And we have this man in his late 20s who is really down on his luck. This book actually does start with a assault by his boss who's a female so I thought that was very different um and was I don't want to say it was kind of cool but it was a twist to see um kind of a male a very like strong powerful virile male who was in a place of um like without power because this woman is holding his job over his head and assaults him and he ends up getting offered to be a part of this program where they pair you with a longtime partner and it's for people who don't have time to date you kind of become a professional like boyfriend or girlfriend for them and when you enter it though 
you're like perfectly paired with this person and there are like a lot of rules that go with it and he's really hesitant to do it until he meets who it is and it's this woman who's very much planning to be in control of the whole situation and then he meets her and he's like oh baby that's not the way this is gonna go so this story was very interesting there I mean it is still a Pam Godwin so she definitely takes you to places that like aren't comfortable but there isn't really anything non-consensual minus that pretty quick almost assault scene we see in the beginning right um and this was a very intriguing book to me I will say that so if you like the older woman trope um it was it was it was good then I have another one. I have quite a few older women because I went on a kick of these. Then I have If She Says Yes by Tasha Harrison. This one is so fun. I've talked about this one quite a bit as well. This is a best friend's mom book. Um, this one isn't taboo at all um, because he's in his 30s. She's in her 50s. He basically li he lived in the home with his best friend and his best friend's mom for a few years when they were like in college. He was able to live, instead of staying on campus, he stayed with his friend there. And he's always had a thing for his friend's mom. And he happens to be back in town because his best friend's getting married and the wedding is being hosted near their home. And so he's there for like the bachelor weekend and the week leading up to it. And now the mom is single and I don't know if they're, I think she's widowed now. I'm not 100% because I didn't really pay attention to that part, but there's no like husband in the picture anymore. Um, this is also an interracial relationship. He, I believe, is half Mexican and she is black. So it was like kind of cool to have that as well. And he's also a submissive hero. Now, this isn't like super huge like DNS thing, but he is like a service submissive in that he wants to do things for her and make her life easier and just love her. And so we do get to see some cool scenes of her being a little bit of a dom, but it's nothing that like, if you don't like BDSM, it's not like it's screaming at you or anything. It's just kind of clear that he enjoys that. So it's definitely a pretty entry level to it. And I feel like if I didn't point it out to you, you might not even like fully notice it besides him being like, I think it's hot when you tell me what to do. But I really enjoyed this book. Then there is Sweet Thing by J.A. Huss. This one is a bit more forbidden. This one is a bit more taboo. So we have our heroine starts out this book at 17. Um, and the hero, so this is a complicated setup is the thing. Here we go. So this book is the heroine who looks a lot like her sister. Her sister's in her early 20s. Um, and her sister is part of this co-op for artists. But her younger sister is also an artist but she does I think she does ballet our hero is a really wealthy businessman who does like hotels but he's a drummer so there's this co-op where it's for the artists and you can have your studio space within this and so in the beginning they are voting on whether our hero is allowed to be there because a lot of the artists are like well we don't want him to be loud and annoying and he's like I'm usually going to be there at night because I come to let off steam after a day of work and they're like okay that should probably be fine and so she meets him at this meeting and she invites him back to her sister's brownstone where she's staying because she thinks he's really hot and the thing is he likes younger women so he's in his mid 30s and he likes dating women who are like 19 or 20 so that could make some people feel weird so I just want to tell you this one is more taboo it's a thing however she's she's only like a week away from her birthday and when they're kissing and things are getting out of hand she like freaks out because she realizes what she's doing and she realizes it's not fair to him and she's like I'm only 17 <laughs> my birthday's in a week and he's like okay so he leaves so they don't do more than kiss however as soon as she turns 18 he ends up coming to see her again because he really likes them young and he really likes her so I'm just laying it out there this book is actually kind of a fairy tale because there's a lot of things about it like she's a very innocent and I can understand why this book would make people uncomfortable but that's why I'm saying it's taboo if you don't like the age gaps taboo pick one of the other ones I pick it because most of these ones aren't taboo that I've mentioned 
Then there is Seducing My Guardian by Katie Robert. Gotta mention this one. This is her newest release in her taboo in her Touch of Taboo series or Taboo Tree, whatever hers are called. Um, and this one is Seducing My Guardian, but she, I think, is 25. And so he's no longer her guardian. He's been her guardian for the last 10 years. And every year on her birthday, he makes sure to spend time with her. However, he, you know, has for the last few years, he's really had to stay away because he's very interested in her, very attracted to her. And so she decides to make her move on her birthday this time because she's like, I'm definitely of age. You're now no longer in charge of my money. Um, let's go for it. And so they definitely have a very hot um, encounters where they relive some of her birthdays and they pretend that he would have made a move on her when she was younger. So like they're playing out a fantasy, but she is 25 and like, this isn't really taboo anymore because they didn't do anything, but they're pretending. Then there is My Dad's Fiance by S.E. Law. This is a bit of a quicker one as well. It turns out the day of her engagement party, this girl finds out that her fiance is gay. And he f like, he even like proposed to her and now he's freaking out and he's gay. And so she ends up kind of running away for a couple weeks and she takes her, you know, she's wearing her engagement ring. Well, this engagement ring belonged to um, her fiance's like great grandfather. And so the dad, obviously, he is really worried that in like a fit of anger, she might throw the ring away. It's very like the logic train with this is very slim. But basically, her mom tells the fiance's dad where she's staying so that he can go and, you know, get the ring from her. And then they end up kind of stuck there together for a spell. And that's all I'll say because it's a pretty short one. Um, Filthy Rich by Serena Ackroyd. I had to bring this one up, guys. It just had to happen. This is book two in her Filthy series. Um, oh my gosh. This one is an arranged marriage. She's 18. He's in his 30s. She's being abused by her father and on their wedding day, he realizes it because he really hasn't wanted to marry her. He wishes one of his brothers would have done it instead, but they've been engaged since she was 16 and now that she's 18, they're getting married. This is mafia world. This is completely different than anything else that we've been talking about so far. This happens there to broker a peace deal. But when she gets up to the altar and he lifts her veil, he realizes things very quickly. He realizes there's bruises on her face. He sees that she's favoring her side. And in that moment, in that moment, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You knew that this woman belonged to me and you've mistreated her. And that's not how, that's not how this is going to go. And so I... Number one, I'm obsessed with Serena Ackroyd. You guys should know this by now. Because I love that in a hero that whether or not he wanted to be in this situation, he knows that this woman, her like happiness and livelihood depends on how he treats her. And that's not fair, but it's true. Like she doesn't get a say in if he cheats on her. She doesn't get a say on if he abuses her. She didn't even get a say on if she married him or not. And the way that specifically in this Mafia series, the heroes acknowledge that and do their best to be good husbands. Like, I'm just going to say it. And in mafia books, that's not something you see all the time, right? And it was just really beautiful to me the way that he noticed it. And they actually make a pact with each other that he's like, these vows don't mean anything to me. We see people break them every day. But I make a blood oath to you that we will always communicate with each other, that I will always tell you what's going on, and that we will be true to one another. And they make a blood pact on top of like their vows. And she promises never to jump to conclusions without talking to him first. And so all these things that could be stumbling blocks in a relationship, in like a contemporary regular relationship, this mafia couple keeps an eye out for. And Number one, I just love it when a hero is like, this woman is mine now, whether however I felt about it before, she's mine now. I love that. 
and this series is full of that but specifically this one because there's a pretty big age gap in this in this series I just I love them I love them I, I love him I love how this series goes I mean three out of the four books in this series so far have had pretty big age gaps I believe the fifth one's supposed to be an age gap as well so I mean, you could read the first one in this book is called Filthy. That's also an age gap with a plus size heroine. But I really wanted to focus on Filthy Rich because I really love how the hero, he's reluctant for this marriage. But as soon as he meets her, it gets real for him. And he's like, no, you're my woman. I don't love you yet, but I'm still going to respect you and honor you because that's what I'm here to do. And I mean, of course, it grows into love because it's a romance and it's great. Um, then I have um, The Devil in the Deep Blue Sea by Amelia Wilde. This is a uh, Poseidon retelling. Um, this book reminded me of Sea of Ruin. I have to say that every time. Um, this is book one in a trilogy. The second book is out. The third one isn't out yet. It's a continuous trilogy about the same couple. But this girl named Ashley is actually out on a little vacation with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend does drugs and they're yacht gets hijacked by his drug dealers they kill her boyfriend she jumps overboard before they see her and then she drifts in the ocean for a day and she gets rescued by this guy named poseidon turns out he's a pirate turns out he finds out who she is and decides to hold her for ransom so she goes from one dangerous situation to the other um she's only 19 20 years old and he's in his like late 30s i believe and this first book it's hard to read because he does treat her like a prisoner in some aspects but he is also extremely attracted to her so um she also has a bit of a humiliation kink that comes forward so know that that's in there and i will say that if you read the first one and you're very frustrated by how it ends the second one helped me so much because the things that Poseidon has to deal with and have shoved in his face and the um, changes that he needs to make really, really sold me on this series. Like, I really enjoy it. And then the last one I want to mention is The Imperfections by Sam Mariano because this is bonkers in true Sam Mariano fashion and I just wanted to share it. So this one is about a, I think she's 19. I think she's very young. I don't think she's underage. I can't remember if she is. But the point being, this book starts with our hero who has some shady backgrounds and he is out to coffee with his brother-in-law, who's an asshole. And we find out that his brother-in-law got the nanny pregnant and she refuses to get rid of the baby. And so his brother-in-law is asking him to get rid of the nanny asking him to off the nanny because he knows that he's done some stuff like this before. And to save his sister from humiliation is really the only reason he agrees to do this. And so he sneaks into this girl's room and he's going to kill her. But she wakes up and she's very calm and he thinks she's very pretty. And he's heard all of these things that his brother-in-law said that this woman is like willing to do. And he's like, you know what? Maybe I'll fuck her before I kill her. So he brings her to his home. And they fuck all night long. And then he decides that he's going to keep her. But he's like, if I keep you, like my brother-in-law knows that you know. And so we'll have to say that the baby is mine. And she's like, okay, I would prefer that over you killing me. Um, again, in true San Mariano fashion, there is coercion happening here obviously that first act though she consents to it, it it is like with threat over her life so I would call it a dubious consent at best however she also is a woman of like wow he was gonna have me killed um she was kind of coerced into sleeping with the brother in the first place like the brother-in-law in the first place and so obviously she would rather be with this guy than be murdered and they're going to raise this baby together. There's a lot more that goes to this story, but again, I promise you a bonkers book and that book is bonkers. It made me laugh out loud. I couldn't stop reading it. And that's what Sam Mariano does to me. 
Like, it's no untouchable, but it's pretty good. Like, it was a fun ride. So, there you go. Those are some age gap wrecks for you. I hope this satisfies you all for now. Um, if you want to check out the other age gaps I've made, they're in my recommendations playlist. Um, and yeah, tell me your favorite age gaps. I'm always looking for more. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.